Welcome back. Well, today we have something pretty special in for review. I was very lucky to get my hands on one of only three press review copies of the new Christopher Ward Bel Canto. A big thanks to Patrick at Christopher Ward who hooked me up with this one. Before we start, if you've not seen my interview with Mike France, I would highly encourage you to check it out after watching this review, of course. And we also did a live stream Q&A where Christopher Ward fans, subscribers to the channel, got to ask Mike questions about this watch in real time. There's a lot of extra detail in both the audio podcast, the interview that I did on the channel, and also the live Q&A if you want to get more in-depth details about the Bel Canto. If you're not familiar with the new Bel Canto, it's not your ordinary Christopher Ward. In fact, it's not your ordinary watch in this price bracket. This watch took the industry by storm and all 300 of the first limited edition watch sold out within hours. Christopher Ward then subsequently followed up with a green version that again sold out in even less time than the blue one did. There was disappointment from a lot of Christopher Ward fans that weren't able to get a hold of this watch, the first 300 or then the next green 300. In speaking to Mike during the live Q&A, somebody actually asked this question and he answered it by saying that they're physically restricted by how many they can make. Mike explains how he went out, had to go out to multiple companies to get them to make specific components to get the look, feel, functionality and finish that they were really going for. They will be releasing more versions of this watch, but they will never release the Azuro Blue again and the green will never be available again. Each subsequent colour will be a different colour for that limited edition. And as you noticed as well with the green one, as soon as that sold out, the delivery times were elongated, lending weight to the fact that they can only physically make so many. Let's get through to the review now and the watch is honestly spectacular. I don't often use that word when I'm doing watch reviews, but I can't think of a better word to use for this watch. All the beautiful parts of the mechanism are above the dial, giving it a high horology look and feel, something more akin to an MB&F than Christopher Ward's traditional dive watches, military watches, and dress pieces. The extensive effort to have these parts shown above the dial was no small task and took Christopher Ward hundreds of hours of research and development. This is one of the standout parts of Christopher Ward as a company. They're consistently innovating and not afraid of new challenges. The function you came here to learn about, of course, is the chime. I've heard it called multiple things online and it is confusing. In reality, the complication is quite simple. There's a hammer that draws back and then once the hour marker hits, so once the minute hand hits 12, it will chime a single chime for that hour. This is not a minute repeater as some have referred to it as. A minute repeater strikes out the hours, quarters and minutes on request. Repeaters typically help the visually impaired tell the time before the spread of quartz watches. Repeaters also help tell the time in the dark for jobs or industries where that was an issue. A minute repeater is an extremely complex movement, so therefore those watches are usually carry a premium, a very, very high price. I like that the Bel Canto gives you a taste of a complication like a minute repeater with all the looks design and engineering of a high horology piece all at less than $4,000. The price is unbelievable considering what you're getting for the money. This is a watch you're going to love wearing and explain how it works to the casual observer who asks you about it. This watch for sure is a conversation piece and I'm sure the owners will never get bored of having that conversation. I don't think I would. So how does the chime work? Well, the chime is achieved by a large titanium gong that hugs the dial. The hammer hits the chime in the key of D. This was intentional, and Mike and I discussed this during our interview. In person, it's quite a delicate sound. It certainly won't distract you or draw attention in a meeting, but when it does catch your ear, it does definitely raises a smile on your face. It has done every time I've heard it and it's probably gone off multiple times since I've had it for this last five days. If you're trying to judge the sound, I would say it's similar to two wine glasses meeting if you're doing a celebratory cheers. It's that sound and volume. Now this was one of the key parts of Christopher Ward's design. They not only wanted to make a chiming watch, but they wanted to make a chime that was beautiful. And I think they've definitely achieved that. The button on the side of the watch can actually disable the chime if you don't prefer to have it going off every hour. 
The watch is automatic, so you don't need to worry about the chime taking power from the main timekeeping. Although there is a slight decrease in accuracy with a tolerance of plus or minus 20 seconds per day and a 38 hour power reserve. Now it's not clear to me whether that 38 hour power reserve is measured with the chime on or off. I would take a guess that it's without the chime being on. The actual timekeeping dial itself doesn't feature a running seconds, which is something that usually puts me off watches, but you can't help just fall in love with this dial on the Christopher Ward. And I don't think a running seconds would actually add anything to the smaller dial. It gives a more sophisticated look in a watch like this. The case is made of grade five titanium with a solid case back. There is an additional bracelet available in a different grade of titanium. I haven't got it for review here. Christopher Ward actually sent it me on this gorgeous leather strap. They haven't skimped on the leather strap on here. Very comfortable to wear. Probably one of the most comfortable leather straps that I've seen come on a watch like this. So they certainly haven't skimped for that. I actually think it looks better on the leather strap, but if you like the titanium bracelet, I would definitely buy that and then buy a leather strap afterwards. Now you think with everything going on with this watch, all the additional components, the chiming mechanism, that gorgeous dome sapphire crystal, that this would be massive. But far from it, it's only 13 millimeters thick, which is akin to most mechanical chronographs and only 0.2 millimeters thicker than a Rolex Submariner. The case was designed out of titanium, with a closed case back with the sole purpose of enhancing the sound. That's why you don't have a sapphire case back on here. And to be honest, all of the cool components I think are above the dial anyway, so you wouldn't necessarily need that sapphire. And it certainly does enhance the sound of the chime. And Christopher Ward apparently had tested multiple metals and found that titanium was the best to enhance the chime. The case is 41 millimeter size and a lug to lug of 48 millimeters, meaning it's not only a very beautiful watch, but also a very wearable one. Here you can see it on my 7.2 inch wrist. And the lightness of the titanium really adds to the comfort of this watch as well. Even though the case is made of titanium, it does have a number of brushed and polished elements. We have a beautiful polishing down the lug across the side of the case and the bezel is also polished and brushed. Christopher Ward do a fantastic job of the cases. They don't just buy cases off the shelf as we've seen with their light catcher cases that I've raved about on other reviews and they've not let us down with this case. It is very well machined and gives a really beautiful look to the watch. The dial is visually stunning. The lucky owners of this watch will never get bored of looking at the dial. The multiple finishing of the components. We have brushed and highly polished elements which really enhance the look. The timekeeping components are situated at the top of the dial where the chiming components are typically where the six o'clock position. I love the way the hammer and the chime indicator are engineered to look like a songbird. A very playful detail and something I didn't really realize straight away until somebody had mentioned it in the comments of that live Q&A we did with Mike. The time telling sub dial floats above the Azuro blue dial, giving it a depth and a really high end look. The ability to see the cogs behind the dial is also very cool, although I do think this sacrifices some of the legibility of the time. The hands and indexes are filled with super luminova, something again unexpected on a watch like this and a really nice touch. And a touch that is a nod to Christopher Ward's other more tools watches. The movement in here is called the FS01 and was designed by Christopher Ward's technical director Frank Stelzer. Somewhat unbelievably the base caliber used is the Solita SW200. Christopher Ward had previously created a jumping hour movement already from the SW200. A jumping hour watch is a watch that has a digital mechanical display that shows the time as a number not with a hand. I think most famous of all the jumping hour watches watches is the beautiful Erlangen Zun Zeitwerks. Frank had realized that after creating the jumping hour movement that they could modify it to make a chiming watch and 60 new components later that's what they achieved. Now the Bel Canto wasn't the first watch to receive this chiming mechanism. It was actually a watch that Christopher Ward made for Meister Singer called the Bel Aura. The Bel Aura however had all of those components hidden behind the dial. 
But this started off a three-year journey that ultimately ended in what we're seeing here with the Belcanto. I consider myself very lucky to have had hands-on with this watch. I think it's important not only for the future of Christopher Ward, but the watch industry in general. Christopher Ward has shown that complications such as this is not reserved for the mega-rich watch collector. Hopefully, this will encourage other brands to do the same. I think this watch represents an excellent value for money if you're looking at other high horology pieces. I think this will propel Christopher Ward to a whole new audience and that's something as a massive Christopher Ward fan that I'm really looking forward to because that will help innovation, it will draw more people to the brand, hopefully bring more customers and therefore allow more of these interesting gorgeous watches to be produced. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video I would love it if you subscribed and hit that like button. We also do two live streams a week if you want to get involved in the conversation in real time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews.